Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a bank reconciliation problem. But before we look at the problem, I would like to remind you about the bank reconciliation rules. How do we prepare a bank reconciliation? And what is the purpose of a bank reconciliation? Well, there are what we call timing differences between your bank balance and your book general ledger. So you have a general ledger at your company and you have your bank balance at the bank. And specifically for the general ledger, we're discussing the cash general ledger. And the cash general ledger and the bank balance should equal to each other. In other words, what you record on your account balance at the company, as far as cash is concerned, should equal to your bank account. That is true, except that we have what we call timing differences between your cash balance and your bank balance. And because of those timing differences, the company will need to account for those timing differences and reconcile them. What are those timing differences? One is something called deposit and transit. Again, this is a review of the rules. I did discuss bank reconciliation, but I'm gonna go over those rules very quickly. What is a deposit and transit? A deposit and transit is when the business deposit an amount at their bank, but that amount, for that particular month is not showing on their monthly bank statement. Why? Because they deposited this, this amount may be late during the month and it's not showing. For example, you deposited something December 31st, it's not gonna show until January, maybe first or second on your bank statement. Therefore, you need to account for deposit and transit. Therefore, when you get your bank statement for the month of December, you will add to it any deposit in transit, any deposit that you actually deposited in the bank, but it's not showing. Also, you will deduct any outstanding checks. What are outstanding checks? You deduct outstanding checks from your bank balance. Outstanding checks are checks that you wrote. You wrote the checks, you send it to your suppliers, you send it to your vendor, but when you looked at your cash when you look at your when you looked at your bank statement those checks were not cleared in other words the supplier the vendor did not deposit them in their bank account and if they did deposit them they did not reach your bank account as of yet therefore you will need to deduct them from your bank statement because the bank is not aware of it. and the third type of adjustment you might have to do on your bank statement is to look for any errors errors that the bank committed, whether they added money to your account or they deducted money in your account, an error. And this is, those are typically the three adjustments you will make on your bank side. Now, in the, in the example I'm going to be working, I'm going to make this, this example a little bit more challenging, a little bit more tricky, but you will see how when I look at the figures. On your book balance, on your book balance, what you do is you start with your general ledger cash account, whatever that amount is, then you will add any interest the bank gave you for that particular month, you will add any collection that the bank collected on your behalf. If a customer sent the payment directly to the bank account and you are not aware of it, now you are, you are aware of it, you will add it. You will deduct from your book balance any bank fees that you were not aware of during the month and any non-sufficient checks. Non-sufficient checks are checks you thought they were good checks. When you receive the check, you debited cash, you credited account receivable for $500. Then you find out that $500 was no good because after you deposited the check, the bank told you that check is no good because the customer don't have money in their bank account. Then you have, you might have to deduct or add any bank errors. Now in this example, I don't discuss any bank errors to keep it simple because there's a purpose for this example. But on, on other lessons, I do have examples with bank errors. At the end of the day, your cash at the bank account should equal to your cash balance at your book book balance. So simply put, your bank balance and your book balance should equal to each other's. Now, the best way to illustrate this concept is to take a look at an example. What is special about this example? What is tricky about this example? Well, here's what's gonna happen. In this example, I'm gonna tell you the tricky part of it, but that's not the only tricky thing you can see on the CPA exam or in your intermediate accounting course. Nevertheless, I have to warn you in a sense that there are other complications. For example, I don't discuss any errors here, whether it's a bank error or a book error, but I do discuss them in other examples. So here's what we have here. We have the June 30th bank reconciliation, which is the prior month. Then I gave you the month of July information. So 
when you prepare your bank reconciliation, you're going to have to take into account the June 30th, the prior bank reconciliation. And I will show you how, you, how will you have to deal with this type of situation if you are giving this type of scenario an intermediate accounting or on the CPA exam. However, before we proceed, I would like to remind you whether you are a student or a CPA candidate. Most likely that's what you are if you are listening to this lecture. I don't replace your CPA review course. I don't replace your accounting course. What I add is I'm a useful addition to your CPA review course. I'm a useful addition to your accounting course. I can help you do better on your exam. I can help you do better in your accounting courses by providing you lectures, resources, multiple choice questions, true, false exercises. This is a partial list of all my accounting courses. My CPA review courses are aligned with your Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, or any other CPA review course you are taking. I also give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording, share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. And recently I started a group me account for CPA exam support group. Please join us if you're studying for your CPA exam to discuss your exam preparation with me as well as other CPA candidates. So first, let's take a look at this example to see what we are giving. We are giving the bank record as of July 31st. The bank statement is showing we have $8,350. We are giving the general ledger cash balance as of July 31st per hour books, 9,250. This is what we are giving. Also, we are giving the July 30th, which is the adjusted bank balance, the adjusted book balance, and deposit in transit and outstanding checks. And this is again for the prior month. Now we are giving also July deposit $5,000 per the bank statement. This is what the bank statement is showing. Per books, it's showing 5,810. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna adjust my bank balance. So my bank balance, and don't worry, I'm gonna be, don't worry about how things are presented. I will show you the solution on the next slide, properly written out. But basically you will start with your bank balance and your bank balance is showing as of July 31st, 8,350, 8,350. Now, here's what your July deposits are showing. If you look at your bank account, it shows that you have 5,000 of deposit. If you look at your books, it shows that you deposited $5,510. At face value, it look as if, if, if you have deposit in transit of 810. What does it mean 810? It means your bank is showing $5,000, but you, your, your book is showing 5,810. Well, at face value, indeed 810, but you have to be very careful if the prior month is giving. And this is the trick. Here's what they're telling you. They're telling you from the prior month, you have deposit in transit of $1,040. What does that mean? It means in this $5,000 bank deposit, you have to back out the $1,040 that you deposited in July, because this was, this, this 1,040 belongs to July, but it was not showing. Now it's showing. Therefore, I'm sorry, it belongs to June, not July. This 1,040, you deposited in June, but it's not showing to July. Therefore, for when you prepare your bank deposit in July, you have to back out this 1,040 of June. Therefore, your true June deposit, if you back it out, it's 3,000. 960. This is your true June deposit. Well, but your books is showing that you deposited 5,810. Therefore, the difference between them is your deposit in transit, which is 1,850. Therefore, we add deposit in transit 1,850 for the month of, for the month of July. Once again, at face value, it looks like you are missing $810, but that's not true. Why? Because really the July deposit included 1,040 from June. You have to back it out. And this is what I did here. So your true bank deposits were 3,960, but on the books, it shows you deposited 5,810. Therefore, deposit and transit 1,850. Make sure this is, this is one of the tricks here. The second thing is outst July checks. 
Per bank, it shows that you cre cleared $4,000 of checks. But on your books, it shows for July, you only wrote 3100 Hold on a second. At face value, it looks like someone is writing checks for your company and not recording those checks, those checks on the books. Is that true? Well, at face value, it looks like this. But if we examine the prior monthly bank reconciliation, if you are giving that prior monthly bank reconciliation, it shows that you have 1500 from the prior month from, from June you have to assume that those were cleared in July. Therefore, if we take $4,000 of checks back out the June checks, well, it, me it means the bank cleared 2,500 of the checks that you have written. However, on your books, it shows you wrote 3,100 checks. Well, now we know we have 600 of outstanding checks. What do we do with outstanding checks? we deduct outstanding checks once again don't worry about my handwriting you will see it clearly on the next slide now on the bank side the bank adjusted side is 9600 i'm going to tell you there are no errors in this problem because the purpose is not to make you deal with errors just to kind of help you understand this concept so now we're gonna go from the bank side to the book side and on the book side we saw that our beginning balance is 9000 9,250. Now what we do is we go through the bank reconciliation that deals with the book balance. Well, it shows that the bank deposited $700 on our behalf. Well, we're gonna add notes receivable, $700. Our bank shows that we have $25 of bank service charge. Well, service fee, negative 25. Now bear in mind, for every adjustment we made, we make on the books, we have to prepare an adjusting entry. And the adjusting entry would always involve either a debit or a credit to cash. For example, for the $700, we debit cash, 700, we create the note receivable for that client, $700. The service fee, we're gonna debit service fee expense, 25, we're gonna credit cash, 25, that's the journal entry. Then. There was a July non-sufficient check returned from a client, $325. What does that mean? It means a client sent us a check. And in good faith, when we received that check, we debited cash on our books, $325. And we credited the account receivable for that client, $325. $320, now, the bank tell, is telling us that check is no good. Well, what do we have to do with non-sufficient checks? We are going to deduct. 325 we're going we're going to deduct 325 and the entry is to to fix this error we're going to debit account receivable 325 we're going to credit cash 325 simply put we will reverse this entry now if my math is right when i when i go through all of this computation it shows that my book balance is 9600 notice my bank balance is 9600 my book balance 9600 simply put everything that's on the bank statement was added to my books and everything that was missing from my bank statement was added such as deposit in transit and outstanding checks added to the bank side once those two reconcile simply put it means i accounted for everything whether it's on my books i made sure it's on my bank statement and if it's if it's on my bank statements and not on my books i add it to my books and after all said and done the adjusted bank balance should equal to each other and this is what it looks like Notice I have my, this is my beginning book balance plus deposit and transit minus outstanding checks. This is my adjusted bank balance. My my balance per books started at this much. I added the, uh, the notes receivable. I deducted the bank ch service charge. I deducted my non-sufficient check. And this is my bank, my book balance. And it should equal to my bank balance. And this is the journal entry all in one shot. So I debited cash 700, credited account receivable 700. Then I debited office expense service charge 25, credited cash 25. This is a combined entry just in case, in case you are not comfortable with this, go back to what I did when I broke them each one by a separate journal entry, but this is, it's all combined. It's called a compound entry. What should you do now? Go to my website, farhatlectures.com. Don't shortchange yourself and do what? Practice multiple choice questions, true, false exercises. Don't shortchange yourself. Invest in your accounting, invest in your 
CPA preparation, invest in your professional certification. It's going to pay dividend for years. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.